We are talking about revival and um, the second coming of our Lord and Savior. Uh, we believe that he is soon to come. Yeah. Um, and we are the people of God. We as the voices of God, those who truly believe are lifting up the standard. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. I'm grateful for this opportunity um, to really do this. Um, I don't take it lightly yeah. because... Um, this is how ministry is supposed to be done. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily having a microphone, right. but it's the impact. Man, someone said something to me at my job, and it really blessed me. Mm -hmm. They said, "You know, Marcus, I, you know, I thought I was a Christian before I met you, but um, now that I've met you, I know that there is not that I'm not a Christian, but there is some work." They have to do that. I have to do. Yeah. So it, it inspired me because it gave them a level of hunger. Mm -hmm. And I think if we're not being that impactful, we're not doing our job. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you know, you may plant, I may water, but it's right. God that does it's the increase. increase. And I think sometimes we can worry about the result too much yeah. or worry about the effect that we happen, that we don't trust God enough to do the increase. Yeah. It is not our doing. It's the Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. We're not that good. We're not that smart yeah. in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And I, I believe that we are um, a voice for our time, for our generation. Yeah. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with, with uh, position, but it has everything to do with a conviction. Yeah. And I believe, bro, that God had ordained um, this partnership, this show, um, just so that we um, can be a voice for the people of God. One yeah. faith, yeah. one baptism, yeah. one God only, you yeah. know, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I thank God that he loved us enough mm -hmm. to send his only begotten son, man. I'm grateful. I appreciate this opportunity. Oh, yeah. um, I don't think I've ever said it publicly, but I've told you privately plenty of times, man, this has been a blessing to be a part of this show yeah. um, because I believe that we are changing lives. Yeah. So, but I'm going to let you speak because I've been nah, speaking good. this whole time. <laughs> I mean, we both, we both started, we started this thing. Yeah. As a, it was started as a radio show. Yeah. In, in Charlotte. Yeah. Um, you had your own radio show. I had my own. Yeah. And then, you know, we just said, you know what? The Lord is speaking. Yes, sir. Because we can't afford Move to on. do this on our own. <laughs> <laughs> Let's collaborate. Let's Jesus, collaborate. Jesus sent them two by two. <laughs> right, you know right, right. Two I, by two. I think that's, and that's, let that be another lesson for the people of God. It's, st stop trying to be a one person band man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because when we're united, there are things that happen. Let's think about it. Let's go bib biblical. When Paul and Silas, after being thrown in jail, um, after just doing the work of God, what ends up happening? What ends up happening is they end up praising God together after being whooped. Yep. But and not only did they become free, did the doors open up for them, but everybody in the prison mm -hmm. was free from their praise and their worship from yeah. there. And not only that, then you got the person who's in charge, yeah. him and his family, his family wasn't even there. Yeah. But but because he was there and he asked, what must I do to be saved? Now that set the order for the home. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it takes sometimes it takes that connection. It takes that partnership, man. Yeah. Um, and how we conduct ourselves yeah. is so important in this time, in this season of our lives, bro. Yeah. Because the truth of the matter is the world that we live in, in does not believe in yeah. what we believe. Yeah does not agree and here and here's the interesting thing yeah. it's not like they don't see the truth yeah they see it they know it it's not like they don't know that jesus is real it's too much evidence there's too many and there's even too many religions even though they may not believe the way we believe who G, that jesus is god mm -hmm. they believe that he was here yeah the it, it's just unique how they don't believe the full story right but you believe part of the story. And that's right. how most of the time our lives are. They don't believe the whole story. They believe part of the story. Mm -hmm. People believe what they want to believe. So it's important that we stand on what we believe because when we stand on that, that's when the impact happened. That's yeah. when God uses us. Yeah. You know, uh, because he said, if you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. You'll reign with me. Yeah. 
Yeah, right, we gotta stand on business. You stand know? on business. We gotta stand bro. on business. Kingdom business. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's it's the truth because the way this generation is shaping. I was looking at um, this guy on YouTube. His name is like Brady Shearer. I mm-hmm. believe I told, butchered his last name. White guy, but he was jo- showing like a, stata- a statistics mm-hmm. on you know how the Gen Z generation is the most unchurched generation mm-hmm. so far. And so it's like, what do we have to do to reach the Gen Z's? How do we reach the Gen Z's? Because it wasn't even that long ago we were talking about how do we reach the millennials? Yeah. How do we do this to the millennials? Yeah. And now it's flipped to Gen Z because the millennials, we're now aging out <laughs> of that little range of the, uh, what is it, uh, of 18 to 34, 35-year-olds. We're aging out of that. And now the Gen Z's are coming up. The reason why the Gen Z's are so unchurched and so <laughs> un I would even say like they're not believing anything at all. They're probably like the most atheist and agnostic like generation is because of the failures of previous generations. Like if you're not preaching and teaching and living up to the standard of, of God conduct, bro, it shows conduct. bro. And the younger the generation is, they're more smarter because what do we do? We gave them tablets. We gave them phones. We gave them stuff early. We expose them to so much information. We expose them to how to get things. Mm -hmm. So now when they see the wrong things that's being done and not just like talking about in the church, I'm talking about like at home. Yeah. You see their parents acting up. They see their parents doing this and they see their parents doing that. And then you see good examples of Christians who are like, okay, well, if you're a good Christian, why my mom and daddy, Mm -hmm. you know, aren't why they trying to do this and doing that. And it's their sin that's bringing them down. And then, Nine times out of ten, you'll see a lot of those uh, Gen Zs, Gen Zers, <laughs> sound old, but you'll see that they're just like, I don't even want anything to do with God. Yeah, and they have the understanding of who God is. They just don't want nothing to do with God because of the people. And it's unique that you say that, bro, because uh, lately uh, I've been focused on Matthew twenty four a lot. Um, the reason being is because. The Bible says in Matthew 24 and 12, I believe it says, because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. Now, when you look at that word iniquity, it's a it's a word in the Greek that means anomia, Mm -hmm. which is very unique. Um, The word anomia is a meaning of it means it means to be ignorant of the law Mm -hmm. or to violate the law. Yeah. But the word ignorant is twofold. Yeah. Because you could be ignorant of something because you don't know it, or you can be ignoring the truth. Mm. You can be ignoring what's right in front of you, mm. but because your emotions are involved, mm. because you what you're seeing and not learning for yourself, because I understand exactly what you mean, bro. But see, then there is a, a point in time, just like we have to, we're going to still have to take accountability Ability. and responsibility mm-hmm. of what is truth and what is not truth. Yeah. But really having a hunger and being sincere because most of even the millennials, yeah. most of our knowledge or understanding comes from a, a trauma that yeah. we was trying to either fix through a feeling mm-hmm. or 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 understood falsely because at the time the information felt good. Yeah. And we cannot be a uh, people of God off of information that feels good because yeah. what we end up being is we will become enslaved to our own selves and yeah. our own destiny. Yeah. We have to, I think as much information that we have in front of us, mm-hmm. Because things are so easy to access, yeah. it we've we are where I can't say that we're diligent enough yeah. in our study. Yeah. We understand we have here we go, we have a knowledge, mm-hmm. but we don't have an understanding. Yeah. There's a big difference mm-hmm. because you can have knowledge of a lot of things, mm-hmm. but if you don't have the understanding of that knowledge, mm-hmm. If you're not operating, because when you have an understanding, let's say you go through an experience. Yeah. 
and you and it's a hard experience, mm-hmm. you have a different understanding mm-hmm. and you have a different respect for it, which makes your decisions a little bit different. Yeah. So what we have to do is and here's the unique thing, man. I had the opportunity. I went to go speak to some kids yesterday. Nice. Um, and it was a basketball team. Mm-hmm. Very unique. Um, my brother called me. was like, bro, can you come and speak? Just, man, it's because it's three of the players, they mm-hmm. between 8 and 12 years old. Three mm-hmm. of the players lost their mother. Wow. And there was a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Now here, when I got there and I'm looking at them, they're at their purest form. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the practice, because that's when I pulled in, I came to the end of the practice. They was doing that one-on-one drill, and you got a certain amount of time to shoot Mm -hmm. or whatever. And I saw the enthusiasm. I saw the heart. And I saw everything. So at the end of it, I asked them a question. I said, I said, what did that last drill represent? Mm -hmm. I asked them. Mm -hmm. It was very unique. Now, these are 8 to 12-year-olds. I asked them. I said, what did that represent? Um... They said hard work. They said focus. Mm -hmm. These are kids. Mm -hmm. They said perseverance. They said strength. I said, that's amazing. You all know that. I said, everything that you said is already in you. But I said, what this world is going to do is try to take it from you. It's going to try to take all of that that you understand. And And it bothered me a little bit because I'm like, we was all pure at one time. Mm. And we allow the world to take that out of us. And then what ends up happening is we end up blaming God. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. of our lack of understanding and also the lack of fatherhood. Yeah. The lack of mothers. And, and I'm talking about those who are really diligent and yeah. going after God. Yeah. And what happens is because people get to a place where their things are not happening for them. Mm-hmm. They pass down that same generational curse of mm-hmm. thinking. Yeah. So now you got this generation Z, let's bring it back full circle, mm-hmm. who is struggling and yeah. believing that there is a God because you didn't do it for my parents mm-hmm. and you're not doing it for me. Things mm-hmm. are not happening. Things are hard. We millennials generational z we have become and i say this respectfully with all my heart we have become weak in our thinking and our mental capacity yeah it's hard we we it's hard for us to handle certain things because we weren't taught and we didn't learn how to persevere past it yeah so now it's it's our responsibility talking about us mm-hmm. those who still have the standard to continue to do podcasts like this, but not only that, everywhere we go, be impactful. Yeah. Every and everything we do, be impactful and and do the best we can. Because I, <laughs> I was talking to my sister. I said it's it's interesting, you know, that millennials or whatever we tried to change a tradition of how people dress and come yeah. to church. Yeah. But we started our own tradition. But what changed? Well, yeah. nothing. Nothing changed. Where's the power at? All right. Where where's the the deliverance at? Yeah. Truly. Yeah. I I can honestly say at 33 years old, bro, that I I have now I understand the fight of what the del- true, true deliverance, deliverance. Yeah. is. Yeah. It didn't happen overnight. Yeah. It was a lot of failing. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of things that I didn't like that I did like. There was a lot of triumphs in yeah. that. But it's a process. It's a process, yep. And here's the thing. The same principle applies in every area of our life. Yeah. Whether it's in what we go after as far as our success, Mm -hmm. uh, as far as our careers, Mm -hmm. as far as our businesses, as Mm -hmm. far as our families, Mm -hmm. we cannot put our hands to the plow and look back. Mm. And that's the problem. We yeah. keep putting our hands to the plow with something, yeah. and then we look, look back. back. Yeah. The enemy wants us to stop doing this podcast. Yeah. We've been doing this for how long? Four or five about, years? About, yeah, about three years. Three years? Yeah. Three years, and then something will say, no, nah, it ain't working. It is working. Yeah. Because not only is it changing the lives of people who are watching, but it's changing our lives, bro. Right. It gives us a sense of responsibility. And that's what people have to understand. What you learn, you don't have to 
be the uh, uh, a physician or or the best at knowing the Bible. Yeah. But the little bit you learn, yeah. the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. You need to go out and be a witness. Yeah. And 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 apply what you understand. Yeah. Apply what you what what is in your heart. Yeah. You know, because that's how we're going to get the remnant. That's right. how we're going to get the remnant. Yeah. That's how we're going to get the people because the Bible says, and I'm and I'm and I'm past the mic because I've been talking. <laughs> you good, you good. But the Bible says that I, the last days are going to be like the days of Noah. Yeah. Everybody is going to be marrying, having a good old time, mm-hmm. and not going to realize the rain is coming. Yeah. And everything is changing, bro. Yeah. No, nah, it is. It is. I think. So this past week, I have. Um, it's, it's been a lot. It's been stressful. It's been crazy. It's been hectic. But this past Thursday, um, so I teach a Bible study um, at my church every Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just, when I was preparing for it on Wednesday night uh, prior, um, it's just like this this heaviness and this burden just mm-hmm. like sat on me. And it was everything that you're talking about mm-hmm. for this generation, for the loss. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we can be so caught up, just like you said, we could be so caught up in, in the own in our own chase and our own things that we overlook the needs of people. Yes, sir. And it's like on our YouTube page, you know, we get a lot of <laughs> we get a lot of trolls. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> we get a ton of trolls. And um we get people that just say weird and wacky stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this one guy commented, I don't even know if it's a guy or girl, but this one person commented and they asked me a question and they said, why, uh, why do Christians only date Adam and Eve back to like 6,000 years ago? Mm. I thought they were being funny. I mm-hmm. was like, what? Like, what? <laughs> right, 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 right. But he he asked again, he was like, why do Christians, you know, date that back? And so I took some time away from it, but then like the Lord kept, kept like, pulling you know, me. pulling me in to like respond because for one, I was just like, you know, I'm. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with trolls. I'm tired of dealing with people. If you want to have a genuine conversation, we can have a genuine conversation. Sure. But don't waste my time. For sure. Just being trollish. Right. And so I responded. I responded. I said, you know, there's a time period gap in Genesis 1 and, and 2 um, where, you know, in the beginning, um, God created heavens and the earth. And then the earth was, you know, without void and all this stuff. Mm. It's a time period and all that stuff and all this stuff. It's a knowledge gap in what happened and all these different things. It was like, but, you know... There, I believe that the earth existed way before all of this stuff happened because then it says, and then God created light, and that was the first day. Mm -hmm. It's the first day of of, of our timeline or our civilization, all these different things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I was explaining and breaking all that stuff down. I told him, I was like, I believe that, and this is for like everybody in general. If you have a hunger and desire to know the word of God, study the word of God. Sure. Find out what God is saying. Right. Before you start listening to the opinions of, um, I would say, of terrible scholars yeah. who have bad intentions and bad motives. Yes, sir. Um, because it's so easy to be pulled astray. Sure. And to be pulled away from people like that. And so that's one of the things I responded with was like, study the word and get to know your word, get to know the word for yourself. It's okay to lean on certain scholars, and I gave them certain ones to listen to that are uh, highly reputable and highly. I'm good. I said, you can listen to these two people. They're really good. I believe that this one person will break it down the way that you're looking for it. Um, and then it just, and I was like, well, if you want to have a conversation, I'm open to the conversation, but if not, then that, and that's that. Right. And then the conversation actually ended up happening to turn and he was, the person just was dialoguing and they weren't saying anything mm. that was crazy. That's good. And I was like, that's so unique. Sure. And then at, after the whole conversation was done, <clears throat> we we agreed on a couple things. You can go on YouTube and find the comments. It's there. Um, but he said something at the end. It's like you're the only person that really gave me a real mm. thoughtful answer. It's like, and I, I respect that. Mm. And I said, you know what? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> I told him straight. I was like, the Holy Spirit was like telling me to respond to you. Mm. I thought you were a troll, like, but mm. the Holy Spirit just kept pressing on my heart to respond. It took me six days. It took me almost a week to respond to that comment. But it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> but it was like the Holy Spirit just kept pressing. It was like, answer, answer. And then they got that answer. Sometimes we can't be so busy. Come on, bro. We can't be so 
out of mind Come on, bro. that we missed those opportunities to plant seeds. Come on, bro. Like, we don't have no, everybody's not going to get saved off the first encounter that we have with them. Come on, bro. But they'll get to know Jesus off of the first encounter that we have with them. They'll get to know God off of that first experience that we have with them. Gotcha. That's all that matters. Like, like the Bible says, some water, some plant, but it's God who gives the increase. Yes, Sometimes you just you just watering. Yes, sir. Sometimes you just planting. Yes, sir. Sometimes you're facilitating in the moment of God giving the increase to someone yes, by a lot, by actually leading them to salvation. Yes, sir. But all of that is the working of God. We have no part of that other than just doing our part by loving people. Yes, sir. By having conversations with people, yes, not sir. being afraid to to step away and have those conversations as well too. And even if you don't know the answer to it. Answer as much as you do know and then say, I'm going to look for this and I'm going to come back and we can have a conversation and circle back. That happened to me Thursday. I mean, one of the ladies in my Bible said she asked me a question. I partly knew the answer, but I wanted to get for a good answer. Sure. So I was like, well, I'll find the answer for you and I'll let you know next week. And that's all it takes. It's simple. It's simple. We we make it so we make it too difficult. Hard. You don't know everything. We don't know everything. And we're not supposed to know everything. Exactly. Like with this, we're not. It's impossible for us to know everything, everything. that's in this book because we, we do. In part, bro. bro, we, we don't have. We have the Bible says we have the mind of Christ, <laughs> but we don't have the mind of God. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not saying that the two are different, but yeah. I'm just saying, like you know, the Father does things that we don't fully understand mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. There are prayers and stuff that we've asked God to answer. We say, sure. God, can you answer this prayer? Can you do this? Can you do that? And God sometimes will say no. Yeah. And it can be the most genuine prayer. It can be the most genuine selfless thing. And God will still say no, but it doesn't make sense to us, but it makes sense to God. <laughs> I think, and here's Bible to back up what my brother says. Colossians 4 and 6 says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned yeah. with salt. That you may know how you ought to answer every man. Yeah. There is an answer. And people have to understand that sometimes, even if we don't know the answer, those who are diligent, and if you're willing to be open like that person that you were discussing, if you're open to it, mm -hmm. then in turn, because what I respect is the fact that y'all end up having a great dialogue, but it tells me that he was serious, yeah, he was serious. about his search. Mm -hmm. Now, and the only way that we know that, which we learned from you, the only way that we know that is if we encounter with them. So we can never, number one, we have to always be centered with the Holy Ghost yeah, so that we know, okay, it, you answer this person, we can never be too busy to do God's business. Right. What did Jesus say at the age of 12? Didn't you know I would be about, about my, my father's, father's business? business? <laughs> Woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, you got to be about like he was standing right. on business early. He was, right. it, it doesn't, it, it's a mindset. Yeah. It's a mindset that, okay, I'm going after God. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Regardless of what, um, what may happen because there is no way that you can tell me mm -hmm. with wars that are happening yeah. with this campaign, which I found out in the word of God also means it's a form of war. Yeah. Uh, it's wars that are happening, rumors of war, things that are staring up right now. There is no way you can tell me that you're not a little shook if you don't yeah. know Christ. Right. <laughs> There is something in you that has to say, wait a minute now. Right. Now, these Christians been talking about this mm -hmm. for a long time, mm -hmm. for a very long time. And even though everyone ha wasn't correct, it was still the right mindset that mm -hmm. the Lord was soon to come. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. So this it, and it just thank you, Jesus. It's going back to understanding why the re revival is here. Yeah. We're in re re revival, and what the enemy is trying to do mm -hmm. is keep us distracted. Keep us distracted. If he can keep us distracted mm -hmm. with things that God will see us through, mm -hmm. then we can never focus on our assignment. Yeah. So you have to pray the prayer, Lord, give me peace beyond my understanding when yeah. things are happening in your life. Because what I'm learning, and, I, and it just happened to me recently— and I had to sit there and think about it because something tried to distract me. I had came across some revelation mm -hmm. and the same thing that happened to Paul. I came across some revelation. Yeah. Then here comes a thorn trying yeah. to buffet me yeah. in my flesh. Yeah. And, and not the thorn that everybody thinking about. All right. Yeah. Falls on that. <laughs> you know, the same. Boy. No, but, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. 
<laughs> but it, it, it's not and because I need y'all to have a, a, a clear and a pure mind. Clear, Amen. Clear, to the mind. pure, all things are pure. Right. But at the end of the day, something came. But it was after I got a certain level of revelation with God. And when I got that revelation, all of a sudden, it tried to trigger me. Yeah. And and I can remember the situation. I'll say a little bit of it. I won't go transparent. What happened was something was said to me that I felt judged about mm. that I didn't even do. Mm. And I'm sitting here and I almost wanted to defend myself. Yeah. But I said, Marcus, no. Mm-hmm. I, it took me a while. Now, I ain't going to lie. I was triggered and I was angry. Mm-hmm. Because the Bible says, be angry and sin not. Right. We're human. Right. So naturally, stuff is going to piss us uh, off every now yeah. and then. Uh-huh. I don't know if I can say that, but I just said it how I felt. You, you know what I mean? Sometimes things are going to trigger us. Yeah. But we have to understand those that are mature in Christ. Yeah. When we're being triggered, that means something is trying to distract us from doing something we're supposed to be doing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. There is something that we need to be doing at that very moment mm-hmm. or God gave us that we're getting ready to impart. Yeah. And it so happened that I had to do a Bible study that night for our men. Mm-hmm. And I end up <laughs> having to minister through that, through that. Bro. But when I ministered through it, there was a deliverance that took place in the atmosphere. Wow. So what happens when we allow that anger to get the best of us and now our whole day is messed up. Mm. Now we're not focused. Mm -hmm. Now we're not paying attention to what we're not paying attention to the signs. Yeah. We have to, as we're maturing, we have to be paying attention to these signs. Yeah. Another thing Jesus said in Matthew 24, he said, you're, you're going to see the signs before I come. Mm -hmm. These are things that are coming Mm -hmm. just like, you know, when the summer is getting ready to come, there are things that are coming. Yep that you have to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. But if you're so focused on you, I can't use you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't because you're, you're, you have to grow up. Yeah. And God is not going to step down for no man. Yeah. He's not going to change his standard for no man. Yeah. And that's what we have to understand as well. These laws that were man made, they're trying to be God, but they're not Not God. God. Yeah. And he's not changing his standard. That's why he's soon to come. Yeah. Yeah. I find it interesting because when you got to think about the conditions that the world was in when Jesus arrived on the scene Come on. as a kid, talk like it was a one world order. Come on. <laughs> talk. It was chaotic. It was a lot of sin running rampant. Talk. A lot of unbelief, a lot of religious elites or like your pastors, your preachers, your, your leaders, Leading people astray. Come on, bro. And it was a lot of those same characteristics that we see that's pl- taking place today. Come on. And the thing is, is like this election that's coming up, and I know I'm getting p- political right now, but it's a podcast. We ain't a church. So, <laughs> talk. <laughs> the, this election that's coming up, mm-hmm. it's going to be so pivotal. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a shift. Absolutely. Oh, it's There's right going to be oh, yes, a sir. shift. Yes, sir. When when this election with the outcome of this election, and I'm not just saying that, you know, to be spooky, weird, prophetic. I'm saying that to be like super evident. spiritual and evident. Like there's going to be a shift in the atmosphere. There's going to be a shift in the believers. Come on. You have to know this. You have to know be rooted in this and be rooted in your walk and your faith in God. Because there's going to be so many people, and I'm saying this because I feel it, and the Holy Spirit literally just downloaded on me. There's going to be so many people that's going to be led astray. Many will turn away, bro. Many going to turn away. And here's the thing, bro, just to back, because I'm always back my brother up, (laughs) because when I was talking about um, the love of many will wax cold, Mm -hmm. you got to think about what happened in Romans, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. When he, when he said, I turned them over to a reprobate, reprobate mind. mind. People's minds are going to be turned over because they're not paying attention mm-hmm. to the signs or the mm-hmm. times. And then they're looking because that's what we're, we're, we have become an emotional Ooh. driven generation. And an emotional response 
generation. Just very everything is about our emotions, how we feel, mm-hmm. and we neglect what the truth is. Yeah. We keep missing what the truth is. Yeah. Okay? You're not bound. You're free. Yeah. That's the truth. Your mind is telling you you're bound because you feel you feel like mm-hmm. it has to be, but you don't have to be bound. Yeah. It's not the, the Bible says, and I keep saying, I, I feel like I say this every podcast, mm-hmm. but he says, I never, David said, I never seen the righteous forsaken yep. or his sea begging bread. Yep. There is nothing as a believer that you're going to be without. Yep. But if you allow your emotions mm-hmm. to get the best of you, mm-hmm. you're going, you'll be, you'll find yourself having a reprobate mind, bro. Yeah. And like you said, because I I agree wholeheartedly, this election that is happening, and not even the election, I want people to pay attention what's been, because the Bible says there will be pestilences. Mm -hmm. Look at what's happening to the food. Yeah, yeah. You got the bird flu in eggs. In eggs. (laughs) You got diseases that are happening in animals. Yeah, I think they said the bird, it was also the bird flu was in cows Cows, chickens. Yeah. Are you kidding me? So yeah. what does that tell us as a people? We need farms. Mm-hmm. We need our own stuff. Yeah. yeah. This is how we prepare for things that are coming. Who, who are going to be those people that really, because the mark of the beast is coming. Mm-hmm. There are things that we won't be able to buy or sell or different, mm-hmm. or different things of that nature. No. So that means we're in the last days. Mm-hmm. So how are we preparing? Mm-hmm. And if, if in turn, they're not preparing. That's another reason to fall away because now you're giving in to what's around yeah. you instead of being the difference maker is a reason why God puts certain things on the inside of you. Yeah. It's a reason why God gave you a certain business. There's yeah. a reason why God is telling you to get this land or get yeah. this. There is a reason. It's not just for your wealth. Yeah. This is for the last days. It's for the kingdom. It's for the kingdom. We as the church are the instrument of the kingdom. Yep. We are the instrument of the kingdom. So if if that's the case, then everything that we need, everything that we have on the inside of us yeah. can help the people of God. Yeah. But we have to be about our father's business. Yeah. Bro. I'm going to say something. Um, and I, I really want people to, to really take heed to the... Or really listen. Let me, let me not use churchy terms, <laughs> but really listen to what a lot of your favorite preachers are saying. Come on, a lot of what your favorite prophets and prophetess and those people are saying. And I want you to also take listen and take heed to what the true. I know it's a difference. True believers, like your mm-hmm. your true preachers, your true prophets, and your true prophetess. Everyone is saying the same thing. Mm. And it's not like we all huddled together in the secret society on the Come same on. Zoom call saying, right. hey, let's talk about this. Or when you're connected to the spirit, when you're connected directly with God, he's going to tell you exactly what's, com- what's coming. Come on, bro. He's going to give you a heads up. Just like you said, like God's going to say, all right, we need to do this. You need to do that. You have this burden for this. You need mm-hmm. to do that. Mm-hmm. You have this heaviness in your heart to do this. You need to do that. Come on. Do it. Yes, sir. Because... What everybody is saying is the same thing. Mm -hmm. God is getting us to a place to return to him. He's preparing our hearts. He's preparing our minds. He's preparing our souls to return to him. That's why I know you talk about um, uh, David and uh, I have not uh, what the the scripture that you just laid out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've never seen the righteous righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Mm -hmm. And and I've been harping on, (laughs) I've really been harping on a lot uh, lately, like pride, Humbleness, humbleness, humility, um, and these things because it's like we're going to need to be selfless. Come on, bro! In order to build up the kingdom, we're going to need to be more selfless instead of selfish mm-hmm. in order to help steward what God is entrusting us. And I'm not just talking about like you know gifts and talents and all these different things. No, I'm right. talking about the 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 the. the I would say the more tangible aspect things that he's giving us, Amen. that he's allowing us to take part in. He's allowing us to, to start business. He's allowing us to buy land. He's allowing us to do all these things. Why? For the upbuilding of the kingdom. On, there are bro. people that are, are about to build churches. They're about to build houses, about to build these things. But these properties and these things that are, that are being built 
by true believers. They're going to be resources yes, for true believers. They're going to be resources and places for people to go to. Yes, sir. To not just, you know, no, they're going to go there for refuge. Yes, sir. They're going to go there for safety. I'm not saying like, you know, some strange attack. We don't know what's coming. Right. But one thing we do know is that we're going to need each other. Yes, sir. We're going to need to be unified as yes, one. Sir. That's why this podcast is important because I don't want people to think that we're only talking about one particular way of the Christianity religion. Mm -hmm. There is only one God. There is only one Lord and there is only one baptism. Ephesians 4 and 5. Yes, sir. But there are so many different variations. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. (laughs) There's so many different variations of Jesus. There's so many different variations of God. Mm. But we have to preach the true Jesus. Come on. We have to preach the true gospel. Come on. I'm trying not to get into a sermon that I'm preparing. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Now you got to stretch because what I cuz what I say it then, stretch it, right. Stretch, then stretch when I preach up. it, y'all not going y'all not y'all not going to receive it. Nah, they you already heard it. You got to say it another way. <laughs> you got to say it another way. Right. You got to say it another way. That's it. Just, Just got to say it another way. All right. So, and the reason why I say that is because where are we at? Matthew 27, mm-hmm. okay. 27 to 15. Talk. Now, my Bible, I have the ESV. Mm-hmm. It's funny because last time me and Michael was up here doing this, I had started reading out the King James Version. <laughs> and I said, love is style me. <laughs> he said, whoa. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> that got super deep. Right? <laughs> but in Matthew 27 and 15, it says, now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd, <clears throat> any one prisoner that they wanted, mm-hmm. they had then a notorious prisoner mm-hmm. called Barabbas. Uh-huh. So when they had gathered, Pilate, uh, when they get, when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, "Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, oh. whom is called Christ?" For he knew that it was out of envy that they had uh, delivered him up. Now I'm gonna go all the way down. Mm-hmm. To verse twenty one, it says the governor uh, um, again said to them, "Which of the two do you want me to release for you?" Mm. And they said, "Barabbas." Pilate said to himself, "He he wiped his hands clean of the situation. It's like this man is innocent, but I'm wiping my hands clean. This is what y'all choose." And it's so funny because when you study the name Barabbas, come on, his name is son of. It's Bar means son of. Mm-hmm. Rabbi, so rabbi mm. means son of a rabbi. Mm. So he's a son of a religious elite leader. See where you're going. Come but on. he's also, his his name could also be translated as Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can fact check all of that. Mm. So what Pilate is asking, which is a super deep question that we have to ask ourselves in this generation Talk. today. Talk, DJ. Which Jesus are you going to choose? Are you choosing the fake Jesus? Talk Jesus. I was about to say talk Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, talk TJ. But are you taking Jesus the Christ? Come on. Are you taking this son of a, a religious elite person? The one that feels good. The one that feels good? Come on. The one you know is wrong? Talk. But you, know, but you, you want this one because you've been taught to hate that one? Talk. Who and who taught you to hate this Jesus? The religious elites of this one. Mm. They the one that's been saying, "You don't need to do all that to to be saved. Mm. You, it don't take all that. It don't take fasting. It don't take praying. It don't take staying in your word. Okay. It's okay to it's okay to use the scripture. It's okay to do that. Okay. Those religious elites. So which Jesus are you going to choose? Talk. Like the Bible says, whom will you serve this day? As for me and my house, what are we going to do? We're going to serve the Lord. We choosing this Jesus because this is where we are at in this society. Talk. Which Jesus are you going to choose? Are you, and <laughs> are you going to continue choosing the Jesus that's being preached by all of these false teachers that's doing these false conversions <laughs> and doing all of these false things? Or are you really going to turn to the true Jesus? Talk. The true God of the Bible, the one who came down in flesh. We are we are all sin shaped in iniquity, but He bore our sins. Talk, TJ. He bore our sins. The Bible says, "By His stripes we are healed." Yes, sir. 
He did all of that stuff for us, died on the cross for our sins. You, whatever your sin, whatever your, your issue is, whatever your problem is, whatever you struggle with, like my brother was talking about earlier, whatever your struggle is, whatever your, 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 um, your issues are, Christ died for that. Like it's the gospel is so simple. It is it is nothing, it's no mystery, it's no craziness about it. No. If you struggle with porn, mm -hmm. Christ died for your porn addiction. Come on. If you struggle with homosexuality, Christ died for your homosexuality lifestyle. If you struggle in heterosexual lifestyle, come on. Like you just want to smash everything that everything. passed. Yep. Christ died for that. Yes, sir. And there's always a standard. It's a standard. It's always a standard. I almost got hyped because I And it's mandated ahead. by God. And it goes all the way back. And I know we just, it goes all the way back to Genesis. Yes, sir. Because God had always had a plan for his people to be reconciled to him. That's it. It doesn't matter what you go through. That's it. God and I, I know I'm like kind of going all over the place, but it's the truth. It doesn't matter what you go through. God still loves you. Yes, sir. And he's, he had this entire plan in motion, this entire plan in place, this entire thing to go after you, his creation. Yes, so you can struggle with whatever you want to struggle with. You can have unbelief. You can do all these different things. But it's when you turn your back to God is when he turned his back to you. I'm, man, I'm going to say this. <laughs> when you go to work, there is a standard. Mm -hmm. When you go to the movies, there is a standard. Mm -hmm. When you go to certain restaurants, there is a standard. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is people don't mind following those standards at all. But when it comes to God, when it comes to God, you have a problem following that standard. And the question is why, why, how do you want the God of truth? Number one, the God that can free you and deliver you from the bondage or the things that you're dealing with in your mind. You can't have his benefit and not follow his rules. Mm hmm. And that's what people want. That's the Barabbas. Mm -hmm. You want the benefit of God, but you don't want to follow the standard of the one who mm. was crucified for you. Mm. The one he came, you got to, there is a standard mm -hmm. because the Bible says, if I'm not mistaken, when the enemy comes in like, like a, a flood, flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up, up a standard. standard. That's a benefit. Mm hmm. But in order to follow that benefit, in order for you not to get consumed in the flood, you got to stand with that standard. Yeah. And even if you fall, mm -hmm. you repent and you keep it moving mm -hmm. and you press mm -hmm. and you fight mm -hmm. and you can be like me at, a, at the age of 33 bars. I wasn't trying to rock. <laughs> <laughs> you can be like me. And then and, and then all of a sudden deliverance happens for real. Yeah. Mm. Cause there is a people who say they delivered, but they ain't delivered. And you ain't delivered until you test it, my ain't friend. Delivered, bro. You got it. You got it. You're gonna have to get through certain things in order to say, "No, I'm delivered mm -hmm. from that." Because I don't want the experience yeah. of that anymore. Yeah, that thing almost took me out, and yeah. I'm tired of it. Yeah, you got to be sick and tired of struggling. Yeah, we we only make ourselves struggle, TJ. Yeah. You're right. We put ourselves in those struggling positions, knowing what's right, mm -hmm. knowing what we have to do. We put ourselves in those vulnerable positions. But just like Paul made it plain, he said, it's not me. It's the sin that lives it's in, in me. me. So if there is a sin that lives in me, that means we need a perfect God. Yeah. Who to can dwell on the inside of us. We need that. And this is the thing. A God who lives on the inside of us, but also lived in our flesh dealt with the things that we've dealt with we tag teaming right now <laughs> <laughs> come on i love it he, he knows your struggles come on he knows what you're going through and come i know y'all like well jesus was alive dead there's no way he he knows your flesh Talk, TJ. better than you know your flesh come on he lived in it for 30 plus years and had the discipline 33 33 and had the discipline <laughs> the discipline to stay submitted come on bro and if he could say submitted, why can't we? Come on, bro. Now, granted, yes, he's part man and part God, so he had the power of God to lean on a lot. Come on. But let's be real. Like, because after he died, rose again, and, and left the comforter with us, what did he say? That we will be able to do what? Greater works. works. Come on, greater. 
Come on, greater. We'll be able to do greater works. Because I go to the Father. Because he goes to the right. And he trusts us with that. He trusts us with that. He trusts us to do greater works. But in order to do the greater works, we got to lift up the standard. We got to stay uh, We got to stay submitted to the standard. Stay submitted to the standard. We got to continue to push. And it's not easy. Just like if you ever play sports to be great, it's not easy. <laughs> it ain't. Nothing you do in life is easy. Why do you think that being a Christian would be easy? Yeah. And then those who feel like we're hypocrites or those who feel like we, we bash people, the devil is a liar. Yeah. I want you to take a look at it as a whole because there is a, I guarantee you there is something in you. If there is something in you that is not right, mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you want to get rid of it Yeah. because you're tired of feeling how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. You're tired of saying, why am I still here? Yeah. Why does this hurt so much? Why am I in this place? There is an answer. There is a bomb in Gilead. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is an answer. It's a bomb, not a bomb, but a bomb, not a bomb. <laughs> and uh, we have, we're in a great place because at the end of the day, even though we know what's coming, bro, mm -hmm. we are saved mm -hmm. and we are safe. Right. We are never going to be without because God is not going to leave us. Or forsake Sick. us. Mm. He's going to remain with us. And we just had to. I think the book of Acts mm -hmm. is coming alive. Man. It's coming alive. And, and the thing is. I'm glad you say that. Because so many people want that experience. Mm. That Acts 2 experience. But it takes, it takes being submitted Come on, bro. to Christ. It takes being selfless. Come on. It takes being humble. It takes being very rooted and grounded. <laughs> in this in the oneness in the oneness of God come on bro and uh, and and all of us coming together with no hidden agenda with no issues come on with with no motives come on with no selfish intent because that's what got Satan kicked out of heaven no selfish intent no pride but we all got to come together for one purpose one purpose one purpose and that's to experience God and so I, I honestly, I, I feel, I feel the need to just, you know, read Romans ten nine and ten. Come on, bro. People who are um, listening, either here, there, wherever, on whatever platform, like, and you're just trying to figure out. Well, I want to know more about the God that you serve. Come on. I want to know more, more about Him. I know. I want to know more about this Jesus. The Bible says in Romans ten nine and ten, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart. That God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes, sir. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. The scripture says, and this is 11, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. And 12, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, meaning there is no distinction between any one of us. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, bro. All it takes is just submitting your heart to God. Return to him. That's it. Return to Jesus. That's like, it. I know you may think, like, life is just kicking your tail. Because I'm not even going to lie. I feel that <laughs> now. But what gives me peace, what gives me a sense of stability, what gives me hope, in the midst of chaos, so it gives me joy in chaos, as the song says, is my relationship with God. Yes, sir. No matter what happens, I can always turn to him. Yes, sir. And I can always find refuge in him. Yes, sir. And if you don't have that, I, I, I'm imploring you yes, sir. to get that. Man. And all you have to do is just believe in your heart. That's it. Confess your sins. All you have to do is say, you know what, God, I'm giving this to you. I'm yes, laying this at your feet. Whatever your whatever your struggle, whatever your thing is, just say, Father, I'm laying this at your feet. I'm giving this to you. Yes, sir. Save me from this. Yes, sir. Save me from myself. I'm no longer choosing Barabbas. I'm choosing you. Yes. Because salvation is a choice. Thank you, Lord. It's a choice. I'm choosing you this day as my Lord, and I'm believing in my heart, meaning that it's already made up in my mind. Yes, sir. That I need you. Come on. That I want you. That I desire you. 
and I and I made that that decision, and I'm living out that I want to live out that decision now. So I want to live out this decision, God, and I can't do this on my own. So I need you, yes, sir, right now, and yeah. that's all it takes, man. Um, I've never done this, but if you would allow me, man, go ahead. I, I would like to pray for those that are struggling in just simply letting go and believing. Yeah. Um, just to kind of bring it to a close because we understand the scripture, but I feel that some people are still fighting, mm -hmm. even though they heard it, mm -hmm. they're fighting. But I think if we agree and touch spiritually, then in turn, man, these people can be saved. So yeah. I'm going to pray father in the name of Jesus. We say, Lord God, that we're grateful for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, your yes, patience God. with yes. us. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, because you're the God of all. Yes, God. You're the God of all flesh. You're yes. the God of this world. God, yes. you're in control of everything, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for loving us enough to look beyond all of our faults. Mm. Loving yes, us goodness. enough to look beyond all our struggles. Yes, Loving us enough to look beyond us, even denying you at times. Mm. Father, thank you for loving us and sending your only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. Yes, God. So that we may have a chance at the tree of life, Lord yes, God. God. So that we may have a chance to live and live again with you, Lord God. So, Father, right now, God, me and my brother, Lord God, we're praying for every person that come across this. Father, we pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you bless their mind. Yes, God. That you help their mind. You help their hearts, Lord God. You help them right where they are, yes, Lord God. God. Father, we're sending a word, Lord yes, God, God, in the name of Jesus, just as you did, Lord God, for the satyrian soldier, Lord God. We're sending a word of healing, yes, Lord God. God. Mend the broken pieces of their heart, Lord God. Whatever is making them doubt, Lord God. Whatever is making them fear, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come against that spirit of fear yes god. lord god and we thank you for a sound mind yes, lord god. god we thank you lord god that they don't look at you as they look at men god because man will fail you lord yes, god. god but you will never leave us you nor will never forsake us, us yes, lord god. god in the name of jesus yes, so god. we lean not to our own understanding mm. we lean not to our own experiences yes, lord god. god but we lean and we trust on we you trust lord on god you, we're god. standing on the word we're yes, standing god. on the rock lord god we thank you Lord God, because you are the chief cornerstone, yes, Lord God. God. We thank you, Lord God, because you're our all in all. You yes, are the God. great I am, Lord yes, God. God. There is nothing that you can't do, Lord yes, God. God. And everything that the enemy meant for our evil, mm. Lord God, you're turning it around for oh, our good, good yes, Lord God. God. And we thank you right thank now, you, God, Lord. in the name of Jesus for doing a new thing yes, in us, God. Lord God. The old has passed away, God, and behold, we are new creatures yes, in you, Lord God. So I thank you, Lord God, that people will be saved, yes, Lord God. God, from this podcast. Yes, Lord God, God, I thank you that people will be healed yes, from God. this podcast, yes, Lord God, God. I thank you, Lord God. God, that people will be delivered and set free, yes, God, from God. bondage, Lord God, yes, because Jesus. whom the Son sets, sets free is free, is free indeed, indeed yes, Lord God, God, in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for the freedom being in their atmospheres, yes, in God. their cars, in their jobs, wherever they're watching this at, Lord God. We thank you for your freedom thank taking you, Lord. place, Lord God, yes, in God. the name of Jesus, yes, Lord God. God. We ask, Lord God, that you have their way. Protect way. children, Lord yes, God, God, in the name of Jesus. Protect the elderly, Lord yes, God. God. Protect those Lord God, who are innocent, Lord God, and have pure minds and pure mm -hmm. hearts, Lord yes, God. God. Father, I pray for the body of Christ, Lord yes, God, God, as a whole, Lord God, that we get it together, Lord God, that we don't just shout about it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord God. God, but we be about it, yes, Lord God. God, going in the hedges and highways, Lord God, going from door to door, Lord God, yes, feeding God. the hungry, clothing the naked, doing the things that are necessary, Lord God, the things that you showed yes, us God. by example when you formed yourself 
yourself in the flesh. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we want to be your true yes, disciples, God. Lord God. Yes, you God. are the vine and we are the branches, Lord God. Living in you, God, we bear much fruit, Lord God. Yes, Apart God. from you, Lord God, we can do absolutely nothing, Lord God. We can't even breathe can't even without breathe. you, Lord yes, God. God. In the name of Jesus, so have your way, have Holy way, Spirit. In the name Move of Jesus, spirit, God. Jesus. And we thank you in yes, advance God. for what you're getting ready to yes, do, God. God. Send your fire. Send your Send your anointing. Send your, send your anointing. revival. Send in your this power, earth. God. Yes, God. In yes, Jesus' name in we Jesus pray. Jesus name. And we thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And for those that's on TikTok, Father, we pray for them right now. We yes, pray that Lord. you will cover and, and protect them right now. Father, who's watching, who's stuck around on this live. Thank Father, you, I Jesus. pray a special blessing over them right now. Yes, Lord. I pray that you will touch, heal, and deliver like only you can, Lord yes, God. Lord. I pray, Father, for that financial situation. I yes, pray that you Lord. will bless right now. I pray for that sickness. I pray that you will heal. For you said, by your stripes, we are healed yes, in Lord. Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the people, Lord God, that are able to listen to this either on, a, on now or on a delayed basis, God. God, I pray yes, that you will stir up the gift that is inside of their hearts. Yes, stir Lord. up the gift that is inside of their spirit. Yes, stir Lord. up the gift that is inside of their souls, yes, Lord God. Lord. And I yes, pray, Father, Lord. that you will send your word to Hallelujah. pierce, Lord God. To pierce right now. Pierce, Lord God. Yes, I pray, Lord. Father, that you will remove that sin. Remove that shame. Remove that stain, yes, that, stain that stain right now, Lord God. Replace it with more of your love, Lord yes, God. Lord. More of your spirit. More of your power. More of your anointing. Send peace right now where there is chaos send Hallelujah. joy right now where there is not peace Lord for I pray that you will just continue to send more of your anointing send your revival fire yes, that, it, that that may it, it may consume that person right now yes, that is watching on the live or that may be watching in on, on the late basis God I pray right now that you will just be in the room yes Lord be in the room God yes Lord. be in the room with them yes Lord cover them Hallelujah. Be their refuge, God. Hallelujah. Be their peace. Be their stability. Yes. Be everything they need in this moment. Father, for that person who is contemplating suicide, Father, I pray Thank that you are intervening right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. Step in like only you can. Yes, Lord. Step in, Father. Yes, Step Lord. in right now. Yes. Let them know that they will be all right. Yes, Let Lord. them know that you are there with them. Let them know that you love them, God. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. We thank you right now for your spirit. Hallelujah. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Father, for 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 your liberty. Yes. We yes, thank you for the yes, freedom yes, that comes yes, with yes, knowing you. Yes, we Jesus. thank you for the freedom that comes with belonging to you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. And I pray right now that sense of peace, that sense of liberty, that sense of freedom to someone who feels bound right now. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you and we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We've never done that before. Thank but you. the spirit moves. I'm telling you. Thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs> I, swear, I ain't going to be like the church. You know how they be like, it ain't like this every Sunday. <laughs>